Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is deal. Deal. You know, something like let's make a deal or, you know, how we swap out and negotiate a little bit. Well, today, as we go into the book of Isaiah and we begin that journey, um, starting off with this word deal today may seem a little strange, but I pray you'll see uh, when we get to the verses exactly why I chose that word for today. And as we go throughout, um, the plan is like we've done so often here lately, and I think it works well, that if we just go a chapter a day and we'll just pull out um, a few passages or a few verses rather, uh, from each chapter. So if we do that, this will take us just to go through Isaiah will take us through the end of October. Uh, but I think it's something that we can we can glean a lot. There's a lot in here. There's a lot in the book of Isaiah. So I think it would do us well to um, take that long to study it and go through it. As always, I encourage you to read not just the passage I'm talking about, but read the chapter and read the chapters around it uh, every day as we look into this so we can understand really the context and what's going on. So as Isaiah here about 800 years before the Lord uh, came to earth in the form of a baby, that in the form of man, prior to that, that's why so many, uh, as you get later on, about the last 25 chapters or so from about chapter 40 on, uh, there's a lot of people that struggle um, with believing that Isaiah could have written it because it was so specific. And those of us that believe the way that God works have no problem believing that he could be that specific. But that'll be something we'll look at when we get to that later on. You're going to see a whole lot as we go through Isaiah, uh, as he changes, talking about the destruction that's coming, uh, always talking about the remnant that would be saved and survive the blessings of, for those that do good and the curses or judgment for those who do not. Um, so as we look at all those, you're going to hear him talk about the day of the Lord. Uh, there's a lot of things he's talking about that were going to happen in their very near future uh, with the destruction of the nations around them and how that was going to affect them. But then also always looking to a future destruction and a future restoration, uh, particularly. And you'll see that as we go throughout. One other interesting note before we look at today's passage, Isaiah is a... a the book that is quoted more than any other in the New Testament. So especially as you look to um, the prophets, especially to say, okay, all that was said about uh, ahead of time, what was going to come. Now, Isaiah is a long book, so that would make sense that it was quoted so much. But it's also because of its dealing with Jesus Christ. It's, it's um, I don't want to say prediction, but his words prophesying that Jesus was going to come and be that suffering servant and that he is the ultimate fulfillment of the words here. And so that's just something for you to remember and contemplate as we move along. So today, Isaiah chapter one, going to look at verses 18 through 20, says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, even as you just read this one chapter, you will see that, man, it's a lot of sin going on. It's a lot of destruction. Compares even the nation of, uh, of Israel and you have you know Israel and Judah and comparing them to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, you think about it, how would God's people be compared to Sodom and Gomorrah? But that's how far they had gotten away from what God had planned for them. But the, you see throughout uh, prophecy, throughout the prophets as well, that there will be these moments of destruction and moments of judgment, impending doom. There's always a light. There's always a hope. And so here, kind of the deal is like, look, you're going to be able to swap your sin, though it be like scarlet, you're going to swap it in, I'm going to make it white as snow. It may be red like crimson, but we're going to swap it out. We're going to make a deal and it's going to be like wool. Now, that's not something for us to just take haphazardly and just say, oh, well, I'll just make a deal with God. And that's it. It's not that kind of deal. It's the swap on his end that 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 God was already saying, I'm going to send my son Jesus and he's going to swap out. He's going to take the price 
And the punishment, he's going to pay the price, take the punishment for your sin. And even though your sin is like red, when it's washed with the blood of Jesus, it will be made as white as snow. Now, that's something for us to think about. But even here for him to say, if you're obedient, right? If you are willing and obedient. Too many times we miss out right there. Too many times people of the world today, they're not willing nor obedient. So they have missed out on the swap, on that deal that God would make. Now, as we look throughout, this is just kind of the introduction today as we move forward. As we look throughout the good and bad that's coming for Israel and the thing that good and bad that's coming for Judah and for the, the people of God. We have to look ahead to our future. And when we stand before God, are we going to be able to say that on the basis of my relationship with Jesus Christ and the fact that I put my faith and trust in him, that God, you can accept me only on the basis of Jesus Christ. My sin, yes, my sin was running red, but Jesus made it white as snow. Yes, it was red, but Jesus made it as white as wool. Can can we say that? Can we say that with assurance? God's word tells us that we can be assured of our salvation. So today I would simply begin this series on Isaiah by asking you, do you know the Lord? Are you going to be counted in the faithful few? Or are you going to be counted in the ones who will receive judgment because you've gotten so far away from what God would have you to do? I don't know about you, but we need to ask, what deal have we made? God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.